notes that you learned a lesson out of that last game. But I mean, does it kind of bring home the point that you're at your best when you can play that way? Yeah, we we we've you know we've had some success playing uh, with both Jeff and, and Devin in the backcourt. Um, uh, we've also had games where it hadn't turned out the way we hoped it, but but it, you know both guys are first of all at this stage of the season they're both really comfortable playing with one another in the backcourt and, and they get to share responsibility as far as handling the ball and um, certainly with both of them in the lineup together uh, it forces the opposition to really have to be concerned about the open court game and uh, our last meeting with Dallas um, it, it, it worked for us uh, so we, we decided to go back uh, you know go back with it and, and uh, you know not saying that it's you know it's going to be the answer tonight but uh after going back and looking at the last time we played, we just had a lot of success with both of those guys in the backcourt, so we decided to go. Is the, is, do you prefer one to bring the ball up no. again, or is it no. we're wheeling and going? We're willing to go. Okay. Yeah, we're willing to go. We want to get the ball out, and we want both of those guys to get up the floor as fast as they can. We want to look to throw it ahead. We want them to push it, um, and we want them to stay in the attack mode uh, the whole time they're on the floor. We run probably more pick and rolls with both of those guys out there together. Uh, so we try to, you know, we just try to utilize utilize the both of them when they're out there together, knowing that chances are one of them will be, uh, you know, there may be a, a, a disadvantage from a matchup standpoint. Uh, tonight, Devin will, will start off against Mayo. Mayo has size on him. So, uh, you know, we got to give and take a little bit. We're, we're probably going to have to give up something from a size standpoint in guard Mayo. But, uh, certainly, Mayo is going to have to defend him in the open court, and uh, you know, in a lot of pick-and-roll situations. And it didn't hurt you. I mean, with the Darren Williams last night. When, when no, no, it did. But um, you know, we were able to to do some things a little differently uh, than than we had not been able to do our previous three meetings against uh, uh, against Brooklyn. And, uh, and that is, we were able to to, to, to match Dante up on Darren Williams. Uh, we actually matched him up on Darren Williams, and we matched him up on Joe Johnson. He's a terrific defender. You know, not saying that they're not going to screw on him, but he's going to make him work for it. And that's all we ask him to do. Was Coach, Jeff's, was Jeff's performance in the fourth quarter kind of give you a little confidence that he's back to being the yeah. Jeff before the ankle? Yeah, my, my concern was, 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 and I know it was his concern as well, was just uh, uh, how, how, how strong was the ankle and, and the concern about, um, you know, hurting it again, which, uh, you know, which he can't be concerned about that. But uh, he's, he showed flashes last night that they get back to him most self the way he. You know, the way he was attacking the rim and, and pushing the basketball. And you can certainly see where his speed and his quickness was a big, it was a big asset for us last night. Uh, he got off to a slow start, turn, you know, had a couple of costly turnovers. Um, you know, he missed some shots. But uh, as I told you before, his game is not predicated on whether, he, you know, he, whether he's having a good game or a bad game or whether he's missing or making shots. It's, it's using his speed and it's getting us in our offense and him standing in the attack position and, uh, you know, getting everybody involved. Second half, he did a he did a magnificent job with that. Coach, one of the things that kind of people kind of took from this game is that you guys were really able to get out in that fourth quarter. One was that the best fourth quarter you think you guys have played, and two, how do you kind of pull that further and close out teams a little better? I don't know if it was the best fourth quarter we've had, but uh, we've had some good fourth quarters where we, um, you know, where we've gotten stingy on defense, and then offensively, you know, we've done good jobs uh, in our execution and in controlling the tempo of the game, particularly on the road. It was a concern of mine going into that building. Um, sometimes you can kind of, you know, you kind of get caught up a little bit um, as far as getting out of rhythm and not playing a style that, uh, you know, that's going to enable you to hold an advantage. And, uh, you know, on the road, I'm always talking about tempo, 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 and us controlling it. And we have to do that in a way that we allow ourselves to get back on defense and get our, you know, get our, our defense in. But we played a really good, uh, really good fourth quarter. I thought we were very good defensively and uh, in, in our adjustments that we made uh, throughout the game of fourth quarter, I thought we did, uh, did a great job. And then offensively, you know, we just made plays. You know, we came up with the plays and that's what, it, you know, fourth quarter is about, you know, particularly on the road. Your success can very easily be determined about the, about the uh, you know, how well you execute in the fourth quarter, how well you execute out of timeouts. Um, and as I said, you have to, uh, you have to control the tempo of the game, you have to rebound the basketball. Just to follow.